how do we approach these patients for the self-care, the non-medical stuff? Well, with the lipedema and the lymphedema patient, it's important to teach them about decongestive therapies that they can do at home and teach them that this is actually a self-care condition because there's no effective, I mean, definitive treatments. There's just only effective therapies. So it's we try to empower them to incorporate some decongestant therapies into their everyday life without becoming a prisoner to the condition. Surprisingly, many of them don't actually understand what decongestive is. They don't understand that we're fighting gravity and we've got to move this fluid, these proteins uh, and some of these inflammatory elements out of their legs. So patient education is a big part of teaching them the self-care. We also call what we call the uh, teach what we call the hold back the tide mentality that once they fight gravity and are able to move the fluid out of their legs, they have to hold back the tide for 18 hours a day when they're in a standing or sitting position. And we think this is important for them to understand that if they sort of let down their guard, that edema is going to roll back down their, their leg, that this is a, a lifestyle change and that they have to adopt the hold back the tide mentality. Of course, compression is so important um, and graduated compression. Most of these patients don't really understand compression. They don't understand that it's over the counter and it's not a one size fits all. And so we really encourage them to try and troubleshoot and figure out what works from them from compression shorts um, to uh, spanks to uh, anything that we can do to help get them compression and something that they will use. It's especially important with the lipedema patient to encourage them to do compression, what we call up and over. Because if you only push, put a lipedema patient in a knee high compression, that's gonna cause their lipedema to worsen around their knees. If you put them in a thigh high, it's gonna cause the lipedema to worsen around their hips. So we really push the lipedema patients to be in uh, compression all the way up and over so that their legs, legs, hips, and abdomen get compression as well. Of course, we encourage all these patients to elevate and we give them the visual that a drop of water on the ankle has to roll downhill to the thigh, that their legs don't have to necessarily be higher than their heart, but to elevate frequently during the day whenever they can. Deep breathing is something a lot of physicians probably don't know about, but if you, with exaggerated diaphragm movement, you can actually move length. And if you can realize that when you take a deep breath, you're pulling air in through a vacuum. And when you exhale, you can actually uh, create sort of a vacuum with a suction, pulling limp and fluid out of the lower extremities as well. So I encourage patients to, to learn about deep breathing and do it whenever they can, when they're in their car, when they're sitting at their desk, anytime they possibly can. Lymphatic yoga is another thing. Uh, Edley Wallace wrote this amazing book on lymphatic yoga and there are many movements that patients can learn to do that actually facilitate lymph lymphatic and fluid movement as well. Hydrotherapy is one of my favorite things I like to discuss. Um, and we encourage patients to find a pool uh, because if they can get in the pool at least once or uh, several times a week, it can do amazing results. With um, compression, you can get 20 to 30 millimeters of, of mercury at the ankle, 70% of that at the calf, and 40% and, uh, at the thigh. And this change in graduation is what actually drives the fluid out of the leg. Well, if you look at the hydrostatic pressure of water and the way you calculate that, it uses basically three principles. It uses gravity, which is of course fixed. It uses the specific gravity of water, which is one, which is fixed, and it uses depth. And the farther you go, the higher the pressure. And at four feet of water, you can get a hydrostatic pressure of 70 to 80 millimeters of mercury at the ankle, which slowly graduates up. So what I encourage patients to do, I mean, you don't have to swim laps, you just have to stand there. And if you stand there, the hydrostatic pressure of water is doing the work for you. I encourage them if they walk, they can get resistance training, but I do tell them that they have to hold back the tide as soon as they get out of the pool and put their compression on. A super important aspect of managing um, swelling is teaching the patients about the musculovenous pump, the calf foot pump. I encourage heel toe walking, especially because you have to have good heel toe walking if you're going to move this fluid. When patients shuffle, they actually walk from their hip. And when they walk from their hip, it actually is just getting, causing them to have a tight tush and they're not using their heel toe at, at all. So what I encourage to teach them is that when the foot um, walks, the foot primes the calf. And then when you step forward, the calf actually propels um, 
um, the uh, blood in the veins and fluid in the um, in the lymphatics forward. So the actual good erect heel toe walking is very, very important. We uh, promote that also with low impact exercise, telling them that walking and cycling, get that heel pump um, going is very important, but we encourage low impact exercises and not high impact because high impact exercises can actually cause inflammation in the tissue, especially for lipedema patients causing pain or inflammation in the lymphatics and can impede the flow as well. So vibration plates and rebounders actually do help with um, edema in the, and swelling in the lower legs. Uh, rebound therapy actually sort of is a, um, is sort of an exaggerated uh, calf foot pump. And as long as the patients can balance on these uh, rebound trampolines, uh, it's something that we encourage them to do. And if you've never been on a vibration plate, especially a standing one, I encourage you to do so because sometimes you, uh, the, it's hard to keep your balance. So what the vibration therapy does, we suspect, is cause like isometric um, muscle contractions. And these micro muscle contractions actually propel the uh, the lymphatics, the veins, and the fluid out of the leg as well. And what can we do to help the patient that is both a medical and self-care? And that's where I recommend pneumatic compression because it's a, it's a medical uh, recommendation that the patient can do at home. It's usually covered by their insurance company and it is very easily incorporated into their daily lifestyle. Um, like was previously discussed, they can have sleeves, they can have pants, there's arm sleeves, there's abdominal um, attachments as well. I am a, a huge advocate of using the pneumatic compression because it's something that they can do at home. They can do it at home every day and they can incorporate it into their normal lives. Like, like um, Karen, I am a huge fan of Lymphopress, mainly for two reasons. One, it has the zipper instead of other Velcro straps. The zipper makes it easy for the patient to use. It also has these boot straps. And what that does is that if you, if the patient can pre-zip these, they can put it on. They don't need anyone else to help them with it. They don't have to lean over if they have back issues. And just by putting their foot into the sleeve, they can easily just pull it forward and pull their own sleeve on and not need anyone else to help them get started on this process like some of the other pumps can do. If it's easy to use, I know they will use it because one of the problems with compression devices, if they're hard to use, is they stay in the box. And I tell them it doesn't work in the box, it doesn't work in the drawer, and it doesn't work in the closet. So it really it's important to find a pump that's easy to use, and certainly I think the Lymphopress is.